Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about systems of nonlinear equations in two variables. So because we're in two variables, we're in two space, and here's our to-do list. The first thing we'll do is a quick overview. We'll talk about systems of linear equations in two variables and in three variables. That'll kind of prep us for these nonlinear equations. And then we will do an example of a system where we solve um, this, this, spe this specific nonlinear system has two ellipses. So let's start with our review. Well, what is a system of nonlinear equations in two variables? It sounds kind of complicated. Two variables just means we only have two variables in our equations. And we'll have um, two equations, two variables, usually an x and a y. That's not bad. You guys see x's and y's all the time. So nonlinear, and we'll kind of attach equations to that. So the nonlinear part, this might be uh, the the most complicated portion of this little free this little intro. So nonlinear just means that we will have exponents on our variables. The x and the y won't just have a 1, which you don't even see usually because it's implied and not written. It'll, they'll have 2s, or they can have a 2 for a squared. They could have a 3 for a cubed. So we're not just restricted to lines or planes. We can have parabolas. We can have ellipses. We can have circles. We can have lots of different shapes here in our system. And system, the word system, just means that we have more than one equation. So when we have two variables, in this algebra class, we'll just have two equations. So we'll generally just have two equations. Each of those equations will have two variables, an x and a y. And we try to see where, if any place, they touch. And uh, kind of sounded complicated at the beginning, but not today. It's not, not bad at all. So let's start with our review of linear equations because we've already started our review of everything else. So if we have two linear equations and two variables, you guys remember we have x, y, two equations, two variables. This one specifically uh, touches. So these two variable, these two equations, sorry, represent lines. These lines, uh, they can either touch in one spot as they do here they can never touch because they're parallel or the, they could be the same line and so they touch everywhere so this specific e equation that i gave you the system these equations touch in one spot and the solution was x equals negative 2 and y equals 5. so that's two linear equations and two variables notice you don't see crazy exponents like 2 or 4 or anything like that everything's nice and uh, just the implied one that people don't write so if we add another variable now we have an x and y and a z we also have gained a equation so now we have three equations and three variables this specific one so crosses at only one point all of these touch only one point at x equals negative one y equals two and z equals negative two. So because we have three variables and we're, these equations are linear, we are dealing with planes. So think sheets of paper in three-dimensional space. So our options are the same though. We could have one, one solution. The planes all just touch at one spot as you do on the right hand, left hand column here. We could have no solution because the planes are all parallel in the first picture, the second picture. You can see some spots where the red and green planes touch or the purple and green planes, but they don't all touch ever. Or we could have infinite solutions. This is a little unique because these planes are actually infinite in all the directions. So we see just a truncated version, so a, a kind of like a, well, it looks just like a sheet of paper. We see, the sheet, we see a sheet of paper, but really um, the, the sheet of paper is infinite. Take all of its edges and they just keep going in those directions. So these cross 
at this middle spot here, this yellow line that I've drawn, and there are an infinite number of points on that line. So we have infinite solutions, infinite number of points where all three of those planes touch. That brings us to nonlinear equations. So again, nonlinear means we can now have exponents that are not just one. And both of these uh, are ellipses. The top one's ellipse, the bottom one's ellipse, two equations, two unknowns. Here we go. If we want to look at a visual, we can see where they touch, right? We know where they touch. Here's a touching point here, uh, top left and bottom left. It's got four of them, four, four places. So as we're looking for our solutions, we're going to have four solutions, and we need to make sure we find all of them. This specific one, because there are squareds, as we're solving, we'll end up taking square roots, and oftentimes students will forget to find both of the square roots. So they'll just get one of the roots. And so when they're doing a problem like this, they could end up only with two of the four solutions. So let's make sure we find all of them. All right. Well, let's solve this nonlinear system. And we've got our system here. Everything's beautiful. Let's, because both of these equations, equation one and equation two, they both have the same variables. They both have x squareds and y squareds. So this is one of the few times where we could use the addition method, where we're adding the two equations to eliminate one of the variables. Because we know when we're adding and subtracting um, polynomials, they have to be like terms, or we can't add and subtract them, meaning we've got to have the same variable and the same exponent. So sometimes we don't have that in our system, but luckily with this system we do. So let's do that. Let's multiply equation 1 by 4, and we'll multiply equation 2 by negative 3, and that will let us eliminate the x's. So here we have equation 1, and if we multiply the whole thing by 4, then we get 1.1, which is here, 12x squared plus 8y squared equals 140. And if we multiply equation 2 by negative 3, then we get equation 2.1. It's 2.1 because it's not 2, but it's our new version of 2. We get negative 12x squared minus 9y squared equals negative 144. Now, if we add those two equations, equation 1.1 and 2.1, what do we get? Well, this is nice. We got 0 here. That's exactly what we wanted. And looks like we get negative y squared and negative 4. So we have an equation negative y squared equals negative 4. We can easily solve that for y if we multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. Both of those become positive, And we have y squared equals negative 1. What? I don't even know why I said that. y squared equals 4. We don't have y squared equals negative 1. We need to get do something with the squared. So what if we take the square root of both sides? Let's try that. So we have y squared. And we have the 4 right here. It's really important 
that you don't forget this plus or minus on the right side. Um, you're welcome to put it on the left side. I just generally put it on the side that's not the side that I'm solving for the variable. But that plus or minus is going to give you all of the solutions we need. And that's just a rule from um, taking the square root of a variable that's been squared. You have to have a plus or minus on one side. So don't forget that. That's kind of important. Now we end up getting y on the left because the square root and the 2 cancel. What happens on the right? We get plus or minus, what's the square root of 4? 2. We have y equals plus or minus 2. So that gives us y equals positive 2 and y equals negative 2. Um, this is wonderful. We've got two options. Now we need to find our x's. So for y equals 2, we will go through the process of solving for the associated x or x's. And for y equals negative 2, we will do the same thing. Go through the process of solving for the associated x or x's. We probably will have two for each of them because remember, we have four total points that we're looking for because our two ellipses cross at four specific points. So now if we are trying to solve for x, the first y we're going to look for, let's choose the positive one. So choose y equals positive 2. And then if we use equation number 1, which is here, we'll take that positive 2 and we'll put it down where the y was. What do we get now? Well, we have 3x squared. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Equals 35. Now we have, we can subtract 8 from both sides. And what does that give us? 3x squared equals 27. This is looking like it's shaping up nicely. Where does that phrase even come from? Shaping up nicely. Who knows? <clears throat> the threes cancel. We get x squared equals 27 divided by 3 is 9. And now we're going to, again, take the square root of both sides. So we have square root equals, don't forget the plus and minus, and square root. And we have x squared on the left and 9 on the right. And the x squared and the, x, the square root cancel. What are we left with here? x equals plus or minus square root of 9 is 3. That's nice. Very nice, actually. So that gives us x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 3. Hmm. So, remember that. Let's do the next one. Next one is negative 2. So here again we have equation 1. This used to be a y, but instead of having a y there, we're going to plug in negative 2. So instead of y, we're going to plug in negative 2. And what do we get? 3x squared. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Equals 35. Uh, hold on. That looks exactly like that. Those are the same. So if we continue to solve for x, we would get exactly the same thing. <clears throat> so why don't we stop and say we get the same answers. That'll save us some time. So we get x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. 
So, what does that tell us? Well, what are our two? We have two y values. We have a y value first off that was 2. And for that y value of 2, we had an x that was 3. And we had an x that was negative 3. Now we had a y value. So that was y value of 2. We had a y value of negative 2. And with the negative 2, we also had an x value of 3 and negative 3. So here we have 3 and negative 3. So these are the four points where these two ellipses touch. And um, that doesn't surprise us, right? Because we knew what the answers were going in. And here we have them. Negative 3, positive 2. 3, positive 2, negative 3, negative 2, and 3, negative 2. There you go. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.